Today I'm going to give you some exercises that are proven to help develop your two-hand piano playing. I'm going to give these to you in order of difficulty so you know where to start and where to go from there. Your piano teacher Tim here and the first exercise I have for you is the five finger exercise. This one's real simple. All we're going to be doing is taking our leftmost finger on each hand, plopping it over C, and then laying the rest of the fingers over the next consecutive notes. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be starting from the bottom C, going to D, E, F, G at the top, and then back down to C. And that'll just get you some basic coordination playing in parallel, which is playing the same note at the same time. Pause the video if you need to, play that a few times. Exercise number two is five finger exercise. Are you ready for this? In contrary motion. So what we're gonna be doing is the same thing, leftmost finger on C, and we're gonna be doing it mirrored now. Starting from the inside, going out, and back in, just like that. Pause the video if you need to. Now I want, do want you to try it from this alternate position, and the reason I want that is just because you're going to see that in your music a lot, especially as a beginner. Exercise number three is scales. You've probably heard about them before. It's when you play one note up to that next same note with all of the key notes in between. And if you don't know all your key signatures, don't worry, I'll help you in a second. This scales still have you playing in parallel but they introduce simple finger crosses, which you're gonna have in your music all the time. And this is a perfect next step after the five finger exercises. Because it's the same type of thing, but it adds a little element of the finger crosses. There are many scales to learn in many different key signatures. And for that, I recommend the scales and arpeggios book. I'm gonna have a link to this in the description. You can learn all of your scales, arpeggios, and all the things we're gonna talk about today. Speaking of arpeggios, it's the second part of this exercise. Arpeggios is when you play a chord, but you play it one note at a time. And of course, learning them to do both hands at the same time is great. They teach you skipping. So we are not playing all the notes in a row for once, but we are still playing them in parallel. So learn your arpeggios, on to the next one. Are you ready for the next one? It's super duper exciting. You're not gonna believe it because it's two octave scales. <laughs> so once you learn one octave scales with the finger crosses, you wanna start doing a second octave, which is gonna introduce another finger cross. And so once you learn them one octave, learn them two, and once again, bazinga bazanga, you can learn them all in this book. It's time for the power, power tip. tip. This one is about the bench. Every time you practice, the first thing you do, should do is adjust the bench. You would be surprised how many times it gets out of order every time you get up. It just gets knocked over a little bit. So always adjust your bench. It will help you sit really uh, evenly with the piano and help you play up and down, no problems. I actually have a second part of the power tip, which is if when you are sitting at the piano, you want to tilt your body gently in whatever direction you're playing rather than getting up each time. I know a lot of students like to do that. It will help you out a lot. Okay, the next set of exercises are the Hannon exercises. These are a step beyond scales because it still involves playing notes in parallel, meaning that you're playing the same notes at the same time, except it has different patterns when compared to scales. Scales, you're playing it all basically in a row, whereas each hand exercise has a specific pattern designed to work a specific part of your hand. Speaking of which, once you get the pattern down, each exercise will introduce you to a pattern. You play that A sending up the keyboard, and then when you get up to the high end, you actually play the pattern in reverse, which is great practice for both your fingers and your mind. Lastly, these exercises are great to practice with the metronome since the patterns are very easy. Once you learn a hand and exercise, it's very easy to remember the pattern and you can focus then on getting everything in time with your favorite device of all time, the metronome. And one little tip is if you have learned all these already, if you scroll over to the side, you can actually learn them in new keys. I've actually had a lot of students that didn't know that you can learn them in whatever key you want. I, of course, recommend learning the key of G after C since it only has one sharp. 
Next up is Cherney 50 practice pieces for beginners. So all the exercises up until now involved playing in parallel. Remember, same notes at the same time, but what about hand independence where you're playing different stuff? With hand independence, the perfect place to start are these 50 exercises by Cherney because they involve super simple patterns between each hand. Really, you're just playing like maybe half notes or maybe like whole notes. Very, very simple patterns to get your beak wet into the wonderful world of hand independence. Also, what's great about these is these pieces can learn them uh, within about a day or so, but everybody's a little different. So it's not as daunting as it seems, like I said, the perfect thing to start learning hand independence with. So obviously, it is going to take you a while to learn those pieces, but what do you do after that, that basic hand independence thing? Well, the very next thing I would go to is Cherney's School of Velocity. Unlike the 50 exercises from before, these kind of take things a step further and they actually integrate a lot of the things that we've been talking about so far, like scales, chords, arpeggios, but all within the same examples. I do want to mention that a lot of these come in pairs, these exercises, meaning like the first exercise, for example, will have scales in the right hand, chords in the left hand, and then the second exercise flips it where uh, you have scales in the left hand and chords in the right hand, giving you equal practice between each hand. Each exercise also focuses on a specific thing. So the first couple exercises might be very scale based, but you may be surprised in exercises three and four that they're more arpeggio based, or you may find something in like a waltz pattern. These are actual patterns that you're gonna find in the music that you play all the time, which is why it's so important that you learn these. Lastly, these exercises are a great way to practice dynamics since dynamics are written into these exercises as well. And it'll give you a good chance to really add these into your musical playing and make your playing sound a lot better. So after School of Velocity, I recommend you start learning Bach Inventions. And this takes things even a step further because not only are you worrying about hand independence this time, but you have this thing called Counterpoint, which is where you're playing two different melodies or at least two different melodies at the same time. I know it sounds really crazy, but these Bach Inventions are the first place you want to start out with that. Some of these inventions can be pretty difficult, especially for beginners, but I recommend to start with numbers one, which is the one in C major, and number four, which I'm going to play a little bit for you right now. Um, those two are the easiest ones you want to start with, and then you want to branch out and maybe learn some of the more difficult ones, maybe like in the key of G, some of the other ones in the key of C, things like that. Okay, before I give you the last set of exercises, I do want to mention I do have a special tip at the end, so make sure to stick around for that. It's a special playing tip that you don't want to miss. But let's talk about the last set of exercises, which is the Well-Tempered Clavier, another one by Bach. So once you start learning some inventions, uh, maybe you've been learning some by now, you want to start learning some preludes and fugues. And the Well-Tempered Clavier is obviously Bach's whole collection of them. I recommend obviously starting with just number one. That's the one a lot of us recognize I'm going to play for you now. And that's why they're great to learn after the inventions. Like I said, this lesson is all about where to start and where to go from there. So you might want to come back to this lesson from time to time, but I do have more for you. It's not ending yet. Okay, I lied. I said that there was a tip coming right now. It's actually coming in just a minute. I want to ask you a question first. And that question is, I'd love to, for us to like all to learn together in the comments. So I want to know like, what are your struggles playing with two hands at the same time? I know it's a little different for everybody, whether it's like finger technique or, you know, uh, your hands cramping or anything like that. I want to know in the comments, uh, what you think if are there any exercises you've been working on that's super helpful for your for your both hands I almost said left hand but both hands let me know in the comments as well Maybe your suggestion will find its way into a future video But on to the final tip which is this tip is the most important It's really what you're gonna be doing after this lesson other than practicing which is checking out my whole playlist of lessons on two hand playing you can watch them all right now if you really want to but that's the number one thing you want to do next is the final most important tip today which is of course to learn even more it's been your piano teacher tim here thank you so much for coming and i'll see you next time bye, bye.